for sure. And I don't like everything I do either. I mean, I am a little confrontational in my debates and in my seminars. And I tell folks, man, if you don't like something in my seminar, edit it out. They're not copyrighted. I don't know why all Christians don't do that, but <laughs> they're not. And some people say, I, I, probably every one of my jokes that I tell has been criticized. I finally have a, a standard letter I send out. Thank you so much for your letter. I understand you don't like, you know, and I fill in the blank, whatever joke it was. <laughs>1970, this article came out and they said, if a carbon date supports our theories, we put it in the main text. If it is not entirely contradicting, we put it in a footnote. If it's completely out of date, we just drop it. 1971, a freshly killed seal carbon dated at 1,300 years old. Still not working, folks. Okay. 1975, a baby mammoth was found frozen. Part of it dated 40,000 years old, another part was 26,000 years old, and the wood next to it is 9,000 years old. Still not working in 1975. 1981, they tried it again. This guy said, no matter how useful it is, the radiocarbon method is still not capable of yielding accurate and reliable results. There are gross discrepancies, the chronology is uneven and relative, and the accepted dates are actually selected dates. This whole blessed thing is nothing but 13th century alchemy. It all depends upon which funny paper you read. Still not working. 1984, shells from living snails were carbon dated at 27,000 years old. Still not working. 1985, they took 11 human skeletons, the earliest known human remains in the Western Hemisphere, and they were carbon dated or dated by accelerator mass spectrometer, all 11 dated 5,000 radiocarbon years or less. Here these things are supposed to be, you know, a quarter million years old or something. It's not working in 1985. 1992, two Colorado Creek mammoths, side by side, buried frozen mammoths, were dated. One was 22,000 years old, the other is 16,000 years old. Still not working in 92. In 1996, at uh, Berkeley University, they've got the Geochronology Center. Carl Swisher used the most advanced techniques to date human fossils. This article said last spring he was reevaluating Homo erectus skulls found in Java by testing the sediment found with them. A hominid species assumed to be an ancestor of Homo sapien, Erectus was thought to have vanished a quarter million years ago. Even though he used two different dating methods, Swisher kept making the same startling find. The bones were 53,000 at most and possibly no more than 27,000. Well, I would like to point out, Your Honor, that is a 96% error. So it's not working in 1996 either. Um, it's not logical That's something to something I wanted to bring up with you, Kent, because I have your debate tapes and I have your seminar tapes. And wow, yeah, you got a fan, Kent. Yeah, well, I'm yeah, he's a fan, and he's got my tapes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and on seminar tape number seven, you like to go over quite a bit carbon-14 dating. Okay. Okay, and so I thought I'd actually bring up some of the dates that you, that you go over and the scientific papers that you go over. Okay. On your debate, or on, I'm sorry, on your seminar tape number seven. Okay. I'll do a little bit of plugging for you here. Seminar tape number seven of Ken Hoven. So here's, here's the first one I'm going to go over, and that's your living mollusk stated at 2,300 years. And the interesting thing about this is everybody can go and look up this paper. It's the science volume number 141 of August 1963. And what they do is Ken Hoven actually takes out one small part of it. He says that you know the ages of these snails are... 2,300 years in age, but if you actually go and you look up that paper, what you find out is the paper's, the article's name is Radiocarbon Dating Fictitious Results in Mollusk Shells, and it says that the reason that you get these dates is because these mollusk shells are actually getting radiocarbon from an old source. Okay, I'll just I'll take this just a little bite at a time here. Is it true 
that they dated living mollusk shells at 2,300 years old, and the purpose of this article is to explain why they got the wrong date. It is true, and the reason that this article says that those dates came to 2,300 years is because those snail shells were getting carbon from a source which was already old carbon. It was not atmospheric carbon. It wasn't carbon from the atmosphere, which is at an equilibrium, mm -hmm. as you like to point out. It is carbon from a marine source, and because that marine source is already old, it's already gone through uh, radioactive decay, that the carbon that these snail shells are taking up is wrong. And so that's the first point. They're, they're now uh, let me answer that, okay? Uh, if, you'd, if we can observe... Oh, we can observe. If we can scientifically observe and test and demonstrate that some of the dates obtained by carbon dating are wrong... Okay, but that's not what's going on here, Kent. I'm sorry. But so let me finish. That's how, how do that's we know which on. ones it's, it's, are... We're not observing that the dates are wrong because, you know, the, the, the process of measuring them, because we know why the date is so old. The date is so old in those snail shells because it's from a marine carbon source. I understand. We like to go on to another one, and that's... Well, we didn't finish this one yet. Okay, well, no. go on. This, my point is, we know some of the dates are wrong, so in a court of law, it's like, you know, uh, you prove yeah. a witness is a liar once, you know, he's discredited. Um, how do we know uh, How do we know which dates are right? Are you saying it has to be atmospheric carbon in order to be correct? Well, well see, that's the interesting thing, and that's why I wanted to bring up, because the next source that you give on your debate, on your seminar, tape number seven, says that a mummified seal in southern Victoria land and this is from the Arctic Journal in October 1971, you use the very last sentence of the eighth paragraph. And the eighth paragraph, the last sentence which you use in your seminar number seven, says a freshly killed seal has an apparent age of 1,300 years old. But if you read that whole paragraph, which that very last sentence is the only one that you quote, you find out that in that paragraph it says, quote, however, Antarctic seawater has significantly lower carbon-14 activity than accepted world standards. Therefore, dating marine organisms yields apparent ages which are older than their true ages, but by an unknown and possibly variable amount, and therefore several radiocarbon ages, sorry, several radiocarbon ages determined from the mummify seal carcasses mm -hmm. not be accepted as correct. Right. Okay, I, I mean, I'm going to try to summarize this so the average person can get this. You're saying <clears throat> we have we can't use carbon dating. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. Well, let me finish. What now, I'm, <clears throat> what I'm car saying carbon is dating may right. give inaccuracies if it comes from, uh, if it gets its carbon from an older source, such as uh, the one, the, the snails in, uh, in the limestone. But that's, but that's not what I'm saying there, Kent. What I'm saying is I am using examples that you are giving in your seminar debates. But the problem is is that the examples that you're giving in your seminar debates are only very small pieces of the overall paper. And so for you to say that the date of this snail is 2,000 years old or the date of this seal is 1,300 years old, but you're not giving the reason why those dates are so old, now that's the problem. And, and that would basically be a lie. All right, let me slow down here now. If I told somebody, hold on, if I told somebody that their mother died today, and that's all I told them, but then the whole story is, is that your mother died today, but because of modern technology, she was defibrillated and now she's alive again. That's the whole story. Kent is only telling us that your mother died today. She's not telling you the whole story. I mean, that's what's going on here. This is absolutely not correct. I am, well, I'm citing the reference right at the yeah, bottom. It is true. It is absolutely paragraph. true that a freshly it's killed not seal... not giving it in context of the entire paper. Well, this is, a, it is true that a freshly killed seal... Dated, I do not believe the freshly killed seal died 1,300 years ago. I'm pointing out that carbon dating doesn't work. No, but what you're pointing out is not that carbon dating doesn't work, it's because these articles say that carbon dating does work. What, well, it's, pointing, uh, what uh, it's pointing out is that the reason that we're getting these very old ages is because the carbon in these examples is actually from an old source. It's either from old water that's gone through the ocean currents and therefore has had time to radioactively decay, and therefore um, it gives older dates than it should, yeah. or it's from an old source like with the living snails dating uh, 2,700 years old coming from a Nevada Springs that goes through an ancient uh, fossil reef. And this limestone in the fossil reef has very old carbon instead of atmospheric carbon in it. Okay, then I'll ask you a question. When, when any carbon date is obtained in a laboratory, how would you know it did not obtain carbon from an old source? Well, see, that's a, that's a very good point. 
And the way that you answer that is you actually look at the source of it. And I'm actually going to give another reference that you gave because it goes directly to that.